Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here. And today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the ZT0460, which is a uh, actually a Dmitry Sinkovich collaboration. Um, this is not a new knife. It's been around for a while. In fact, it was recently discontinued. Uh, there's a decent price on it right now. I will link this knife right down in the description so that you guys can go check it out uh, if you want. Thank you so much to at Franco3115 for sending this in for review. Please give him a follow on Instagram. It's, uh, it's because of people like him that I'm able to bring you guys daily knife content. It's also because of my generous patrons. Thanks so much for supporting me. There's a link for Patreon right down below. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Let's go ahead and do some size comparison. First off, how about up against the uh, larger brother? So this is the 0462, which I will also link right down below. Uh, bigger boy, definitely. Now, uh, there's a couple of different versions of this guy, right? Um, but uh, that's what you're looking at for size comparison between these two. And probably we should measure it, right? So overall length of the 0460 is coming in at about seven and a half inches. Blade length, you could call it three and a half, right? It's definitely over three. Not any, not going to get away from that. Uh, it, depending on how they, you know, whoever's measuring it, depending on where they want to put the final marker up in this area. That's how they're going to, you know, come to the conclusion on blade length. Cutting edge is absolutely 3.4 inches on the dot. Let's go ahead and do some other size comparisons up against the Ontario Rap Model 1 and Rap Model 2. This guy is closer to the size of the Rap Model 2, but it has way, way more cutting edge. Uh, handle room, I mean, where are you actually going to put your hands? Pretty similar to the Rat 2, way more cutting edge. How about up against the Spyderco PM2 and Spyderco Para 3? Uh, the uh, Spyderco Para 3 is going to be the one that's closest in size. Uh, way more handle room on the Para 3, but way more cutting edge on the ZT. Last but not least, let's put it up against the uh, Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue, and its little brother, the Mini Griptilian. This guy is kind of in between with just a skinnier profile, so there you go. Uh, let's go ahead and do uh, carry profile up against the Spyderco Para 3. You can see thickness here. It's actually not really that thick of a knife. It's pretty thin. The titanium overall is a little bit thinner than the Spyderco Para 3. How about length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3? You can see here that it's really not that big of an object, including even including the flipper tab. It just has an odd curvature to it, so the presence of it is a little bit of goofy, right? Uh, but length and height, no, nah, it's really not going to be that bad. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check. Actually, I already did this. Uh, I recentered the blade, which we're going to talk about here in just a sec, but I'll go ahead and show you guys anyway. The pivot is a T8, and the body screws are all going to be T6. But there's minimal body screws, so it's not really that big of a deal. Pocket, uh, pocket clip screws are also T6, and so is the lock bar insert screw, so that's fine. You can absolutely, by the way, get my tools right down in the description in the uh, my tools section. And let's see here. Next up, sorry, my, <laughs> can hear my, my wife and daughter are both home because my daughter was ill yesterday. She's fine, but she's clearly upset about something. So I'm going to try and get through this with, <laughs> uh, without paying too much attention to that. Let's go ahead and do a blade stock thickness measurement here real quick. Uh, blade stock thickness on this guy is coming in at uh, 118, 117 thousandths, not a thick knife, or I'm sorry, not a thick blade at all. How about uh, milling on the inside? You can get my flashlight down in the description as well. And can we see in there? I don't believe there's any milling. Can you guys see? Yeah, looks like it's just solid tie, which is fine. It's a small enough knife, I'm not sure that it needs it. This feels like it weighs somewhere around three to three and a half ounces. Let's find out. Yeah, a little less than that, 2.89 ounces, which on this channel means it's ultra lightweight. The ratios are actually really good on this guy, which is going to make a lot of people happy. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about this thing here. Um, like I said, it's discontinued. So I'm doing a review on this, but it's still available. So I'm letting people know, you know, because the price is pretty, it's reasonable. It used to be more, but the price is pretty reasonable right now. So I just want to let you guys know what I think. We've got uh, titanium in contrast with the black hardware. 
This, when ZT does this type of titanium, it really just looks great. Uh, we have this sort of darker, tumbled uh, titanium with the edges all nicely knocked down. Uh, this, this looks great. With the milling and everything like that, it's a nice finish. What I'm not a big fan of, and this is going to be a personal thing when it comes to aesthetics, is the S shape. I don't like that type of curvature. A little bit, not that not that big of a deal. If anybody has ever seen, I believe, the Dmitry Sinkovich and Shurgorov cannabis, that's about as much curvature as I'm okay with. That's a that's an old collab. Dmitry Sinkovich kind of, kind of likes to do this. There's some some designs that he's done where it's not quite so aggressive. The S shape is kind of like a aesthetic killer for me. But for other people, it's like, oh no, I love that. That's kind of my thing, right? So the question is, how does it translate ergonomically? Not not super, but not terrible. I mean, like I get, like my hands fit in there, but my hands are kind of cramped on this smaller guy. On the bigger guy, not so much, but the, the S shape is like they fall into where they're supposed to fall into, right? But this area right here, I'm pushed up against that flipper tab, which is nicely knocked down, but I, it just, I can really feel it, right? It's, it's not a pointy flipper tab, it's just, thin it's just a narrow flipper tab and even though they've knocked it down to get a full grip on it which is what I'm wanting to do I'm really pushed up against that to lock in on top of that it's got this area down here where my pinky's kind of wanting to slide off the end so yeah I mean like I'm holding on to it my hand's probably not going anywhere the knife is probably not going to fly out of my hands but is it comfortable I'm not going to tell you guys it's comfortable I can also feel the pocket clip just yeah I no, ergonomically it's not my favorite thing in the entire world. I'm just gonna be honest with you guys. Um, but I do like the finish on the titanium and I do love it when ZT does this milling work, right? Uh, the, uh, the screws are black in contrast with a black backspacer that looks pretty nice. Blade itself is a satin finish, which, you know, when this knife was brand new, I think the satin finish, I was, I was more accepting of the satin finish. When I first, you know, discovered ZT, my first zero tolerance knife ever was the ZT 0562 CF. And this was back in 2013 or 2014 when the CF variant was actually M390. I know it's gone through 204P and 20CV, which are all analogs, but my first one was M390. That satin finish M390 blade at the time was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. That was 2013. It's 2021 now. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just kind of tired of it. So ZT does a great job with satin finishes. I've seen a couple of tumbled finishes from ZT. I've seen a, a couple of different ones. I think they do a pretty good job with their tumbled finish, right? Um, uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I kind of their their tumbled finish is just okay, right? So this looks pretty good. I think ZT does one of the better satin finishes out there. I don't know if you guys will agree with me or not, but. Their belt satin finishes, I think, I'm just wiping my finger to uh, pr prints off. Their belt satin finishes, I think, tend to appear a little bit better than some other companies who are doing this type of thing. So this is all right. It says this uh, very upswept sort of Persian style blade, which again is not really my cup of tea, but they did a good job with it. Flat that carries out roughly, I don't know, 80% length of the blade. Carries some thickness out to, I'm not going to say all the way out to the tip. It's okay. Um, it's, it's honestly kind of thick behind the edge for being such a, a thin blade stock but will it cut yeah it'll still cut this one's been used quite a bit but it'll still cut it'll still do your regular day-to-day -day stuff this is not what i'd call a hard use frame lock this is an edc style blade with kind of a a note of an air of conversation piece right i mean that's kind of what we're looking at is it durable and capable yes but there's a little more going on here with the, the design aesthetic that just it's it, it will work as a tool, but to me, this is less of a tool and more of a conversation piece, especially when compared to other things in ZT's line, right? ZT logo up front. And then, of course, we have the typical Kai USA uh, paragraph on the back of it. 0460 TI, Kai USA, Sinkovich design, and then the serial number, and then it says CPM 20 CV, which is great. CPM 20 CV. This is a full titanium American-made knife in CPM 20 CV. That's got a very reasonable price tag on it. I'd say, in a lot of ways, an incredibly redeeming price tag on it, right? Uh, fit and finish on this guy, it looks great. The bevels look great on both sides, right? Um, it does have a captive pivot, which I think is really cool. I'm glad that they do that because free spinning pivots suck. They suck. 
It is the worst thing. Now, it used to be, oh, darn it, it's a free spinning pivot. I have to use two. But now, as many knives as I've disassembled and probably you guys having watched however many reviews, not just on my channel, but all over the place, right? Um, you uh, probably don't like disassembling knives that way. With You probably just, it makes it that much easier to just be able to adjust it. So that's great that they went ahead and included that captive pivot. Um, seating the hardware, like I said, everything's excellent here. Fit and finish looks good uh, all the way around. The pocket clip, ZT has this thing where they, you know, sometimes they'll do like really intricate, uh, like nice sculpting of the titanium and it'll be a really unique design or something like this. Like this knife, whether you love it or hate it, it's got this really interesting aesthetic and it like you look at the bevels and the titanium and you just think, wow, you know, a lot of work went into this and it looks nice. And then the pocket clip is just this afterthought, right? This is just a generic clip. Does it work? Yeah, kinda. I mean, it's fine. It's it's all it's all right. It's a po that's all I can really say about it is it's a pocket clip. Carries about here, not too deep, not too shallow. All right, it's just kind of weird. Steel lock bar insert that's doubling as the over travel stop. The detent on this guy is good. The action is good. I did center it. So is it still there? Is it still staying? Yeah, it's wanting to come back off a little bit. I just need to give it a little bit of a. Uh, I need to give it a turn. And I also sometimes the you know you can push on it and it'll sort of reset. It's pretty darn close. You can see the gaps on either side of the blade are there. And then maybe as the grind comes down to the tip, it's like not centered at the tip, which is infinitely more frustrating. It's okay. It just needs a turn of the pivot. Action on this guy. We are pretty much in a definite double clutch situation. You see what's happening here? This is the area where the flipper tab should be contacting my thumb so that it, the blade can be stopped before I move my thumb out of the way and close the blade, which it can do if you're in exactly the right place. But it's pretty much never gonna be in exactly the right place when you're trying to do this quickly and you're trying to, you're not really paying attention to it. This is a classic double clutch. That means that the detent ball is not quite up on the face of the blade by the time that flipper tab comes down to contact your finger. So when you go to reposition, it just happened right there when I went to move my thumb out of the way and close it, now I have to snap it over the detent ball. Is that a big deal? Is it a deal breaker? No, it's just really, really annoying. It's the issue that plagued the nearly perfect ZT0562 design. Um, and uh, it's not just with ZT knives, we just see that sometimes. It's just kind of a bummer. The action itself is pretty good. The internal bearings, yeah, there's a couple of places where maybe there's some bumps and stuff, but it, it's all right. Um, and I have to assume that it's perhaps because this thing has been, you know, tightened a couple of times and reassembled a couple of times. It's all right. This is a shake shut action. Where it is smooth, it's very smooth. There's just a couple of, I mean, right, bump, 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 and then the rest of it's fine. It's just a couple of areas. I'm going to guess that. They're indentions made by the ball bearings inside of the uh, inside of the pivot or the surfaces. You know, the worst case scenario is that the surfaces were not done correctly from the factory, but I don't think that's the case. It's generally, you know, a lot of knives that have been heavily loved, right? That are running on bearings. I'll feel that sometimes. Um, but the uh, blade, once it's in the closed position, there is no detent lash, right? Like I said, uh, it's was centered when I centered it. It probably just needs another quick turn of the pivot. No blade play up, down, left, or right. And despite being well loved, we're still locking up at, well, it looks like it's more than 50%. Let's check the mark on the tang. A little bit more than, I'd say it's locking up at 60 to 65%, right? All right, so, excuse me, I think I'm gonna sneeze in the middle of a review. <coughs> excuse me, jeez, got my, Daughter crying, I'm sneezing. What a weird review. All right. So this is a $159 zero tolerance time. This is $160 for titanium, 20 CV. Okay, or like it's not my favorite ergonomic, like the ergonomic uh, lines in this are just whatever, right? I mean, it's an interesting aesthetic. A lot of people are gonna go, you either like the aesthetic or you don't, right? You, so if you like it, maybe you're like, whatever, I don't really care if it's ergonomic. I don't like Kai's big, you know, paragraph they put on stuff. 
Um, I'm really hoping that uh, the internal surfaces uh, and uh, centering is good from the factory on, on all of these. And you know, generally with ZT, it is. It generally is good. So, but I just, it's hard to say because this is used. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the style of the blade, Persian, but that, again, that's an aesthetic thing, right? The blade itself is curiously thick behind the edge, which is Fairly typical of ZT, especially during the time that they were making these, even though the blade stock is um, pretty thin, right? The action's good. Pocket clip is absolutely an afterthought, but again, that's typical ZT. Um, but gosh, guys, for, you know, it's it's got good ratios. It's got good materials. It's got good balance. Uh, um, and for, you know, the original price is probably questionable. I'm going to guess that... Whatever this was before it was discontinued, what was it? It was between 190 and 220 something like that. I was probably like, ah, oh, it's okay. But at the price it's at, it's like, <laughs> gosh, you're looking at an American-made product for roughly 160 bucks, maybe a little bit less. It's not bad. It's really hard for me to say I absolutely recommend this because the design is not my favorite. But it's okay enough and the price is really good. Like the price, what they want for it is really good. It's not like on the line like, oh, the price is ho-hum. No, the price is great right now because it's discontinued. Now, it depends on when you're watching this, right? If it's 2023 right now and you're about to leave a comment that you can't find this knife anywhere, that's your fault. <laughs> that's your fault because I recorded this in 2021, right? So check the date on the video. Um, but they should be available at the time of this of this video. So I would say as, as of right now, this is definitely not my favorite ZT. In fact, personally, aesthetically, the design, this is probably one of my least favorite ZTs that I've ever seen. But it's really hard to argue with it. It does work. It's got a blade shape that will be good for EDC. The size is good for EDC, right? The ratios are all pretty darn good. And geez, American made, 160 bucks. Not bad. For those reasons, and those reasons alone, I'm gonna put it in my recommended knives playlist. Um, so yeah, if you wanna check this out, do it while you can because it's discontinued, so likely when it's gone, it's gonna be gone forever. Um, that's gonna be pretty much it today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.